Well, for more, let's go now to New York and speak with Vinu Varghese, a criminal defense attorney and former prosecutor. And Vinu, let's start with the obvious. We've seen the witness list. We've heard comments from the judge, not so sympathetic to the prosecution. Paul Manafort decided not to cop a plea, go to trial. Was that a smart bet? It doesn't appear to be. Uh, the evidence appears to be very strong. Uh, if this is a witch hunt, then Paul Manafort better be a witch and use some magic to get himself out of these charges. So I think probably the best thing for him would have been to cooperate. Uh, but you know, the the, the case uh, cases like this where there is evidence of of massive amounts of financial transactions, thirty million dollars, uh, and then twenty million dollars of laundered money here in the United States. It's going to be tough for Manafort to beat these charges. Vinu, we are talking about a thirty-two separate counts overall against Paul Manafort. Is there one or two? Are there one or two that stand out for you as the sort of the biggest red flags, the ones that maybe Mueller will be watching out for? Well, the, the tax returns, the filing false tax returns, um, those are those are going to be difficult for him because clearly he had all these offshore accounts. He didn't report them. I mean, there's a separate case in D.C. going on where it's going to go into that a little bit more. But, you know, these are these are problematic for him in, in many ways because obviously he had the money. He bought property in New York and in, in Brooklyn. He he made uh, improvements to his home. There's a lot of things that he did here. It's classic. You know, that's the classic examples of fruits of, uh, you know, Ill gains that he didn't report. Now, had he just reported all of this, he wouldn't have been in trouble. But, you know, he, he liked his lifestyle. He liked living a, a big life. And then, as the government is saying, when the money ran out from the Ukraine, from his, uh, from his work in Russia, he, he got loans to fund his lifestyle. Vino, you know, just in the last couple of days, we've got reports that Michael Cohn, President Trump's former attorney, may have other evidence, may have tapes, some of it relating to Paul Manafort and whether he attended a, uh, a meeting before that meeting with the Russians. Is it, is it a possibility for Manafort to uh, basically turn witness during the middle of the trial afterwards? I mean, is that, op that door still open for him? Absolutely, and I'm sure the government would welcome it. Uh, sometimes the government goes through, the federal government particularly, will go through a trial. Uh, and remember, there's another trial scheduled in, you know, after this trial is done in D.C. So there are calculations made by Manafort to hopefully get a you know get one of these trials done. Now he thought he may have been able to to work this with a better jury pool in in, in Virginia than in DC, a better a a more white jury pool, a more conservative jury pool that may be more sympathetic to him. But the but the charges in this indictment are uh, and it appears just looking at the witness list and looking at the the amount of exhibits, the charges do appear very strong. Now the one thing that's in Manafort's favor is that particularly on the tax uh, case uh, and the tax charges, the government has to show that he knew what he was doing was illegal. So in essence, that filing false tax returns is like committing perjury. He, he had, the government will have to show that he knew that what he was doing was wrong. But with the, that combined with the properties being brought, I don't think it's going to be that hard for the government. Vinu, we just heard uh, in the report a moment ago, Chris Christie saying that Mueller is going to be looking closely at the paper trail uh, that comes out of this uh, trial. Where do you think, it's obviously a big question, there's a lot that uh, is not public knowledge, but where do you think that paper trail might lead that is relevant to the Mueller probe? Well, ultimately, you know, this is obviously this came out of the the Russia investigation. Now the the, the lawyers, for the government, have promised not to use the word Russia uh, during this case, and this case isn't about his whether there was collusion with Russia. But that's obviously where the the Mueller investigation is looking. And, and again, who knows if what Cohen is saying is true or not? We don't know. But it's I don't think it's really a stretch to believe that Donald Trump's son, his son-in-law, and his campaign manager may have all known about this meeting at Trump Tower, a place where he lives and has his name, you know, to, to seek dirt on his biggest political rival, Hillary Clinton. Uh, and look, uh, after this, if he gets Manafort, if he gets uh, a guilty plea, well, that will have an impact on some of the other uh, p participants, targets of his probe? 
Well, you know, Manafort is a, or was a very large figure in the Republican Party. So the answer to that question is possibly, but again, we don't know what President Trump is going to do and whether he's going to pardon him. Uh, there, are, there are complications for President Trump if he does that. It doesn't prevent the states from going, a state prosecution of Manafort, and it may actually strip him of his right to remain silent. So interestingly, ironically enough, Paul Manafort gets convicted, President Trump pardons him. But then he may not be able to plead the fifth at that point and keep keep his right to remain silent if he's pardoned. And may actually have to provide that information against uh, President Trump. All right. So, and interesting uh, and important know, ultimately nuance. Ultimately, this may all lead back to President Trump. All right. Well, this trial is expected to last about three weeks. We'll Thank follow you. it closely. And next one is September in Washington.